Kwe Talofa and good morning to you people of the internet. Welcome to the show. So last week I posted the first of a three video series reviewing a three episode arc of Doctor Who. Uh, now last week I did my review of Utopia and if you guys haven't seen it already go back and watch it. Uh, description and uh, yeah videos in the description. Uh, but here's a bit of a recap for you. Utopia was a decent episode, which saw the Doctor reunite with Captain Jack Harkness. Having been flung to the end of the universe, the Doctor helps a rocket full of human refugees reach Utopia, their final hope of survival. But it is discovered that charming Professor Yana, his head, is really the Master, a long-time adversary of the Doctor. After regenerating, he steals the TARDIS and goes back in time, leaving the trio at the mercy of the feral future kind. But where to? Does the trio manage to escape the future kind? What has the Master done? Well, let's find out. This is Sound of the Drums. Quite anticlimactically, we open in London, 21st century, as our heroes return. The Doctor managed to reactivate Jack's Vortex Manipulator, a kind of a mini-time machine, and escape the future kind. Man, what a horrible way to end that cliffhanger. As they try to figure out where the Master could have gone, Martha has a bit of a realisation. The Master is none other than Harold Saxon, a mysterious man who has been mentioned throughout the series, and he's just been elected Prime Minister. The Master is Prime Minister of Great Britain. I should actually say this was quite good timing politically, uh, given the climate at the time, if you'll allow me to explain. In 1997, Tony Blair had brought Labour back into power after 18 years of Margaret Thatcher and John Major's Conservative Party, and had proven to be quite a popular Prime Minister until 2003, when he joined George Bush in invading Iraq. While he was criticised for his move, he managed to win in 2005 with a smaller majority, but stood down in 2007, making room for Gordon Brown. Many speculated he'd call an early election, and this episode is a good reflection of that, despite the fact this never actually happened. But back to the review. Saxon returns from the palace to make a victory speech, and... Has been sick! This country needs healing. This country needs medicine. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that what this country really needs, right now, is a doctor. I do have a bit of a political nitpick here. How could Saxon win the election? It's not a presidential election. A government must be formed by one or two parties in the Commons, with a leader serving as Prime Minister. And even if Saxon was popular, there would need to be a tremendous swing against Labour, the Conservatives, and the Liberal Democrats to give Saxon a chance to govern. Given, of course, he had his own party. Anyway, after the opening, Saxon walks through Downing Street with files for a cabinet meeting. But inside, he gives an unusual thanks. I'm not like... I'm like... Because you are traitors. Yes, you are! As soon as you saw the vote swinging my way, you abandoned your parties and you jumped on the Saxon bandwagon. So, this is your reward. He ends up gassing them, but how did he manage to do that? He was only elected Prime Minister. Uh, anyway. When Diamanda Hagen reviewed this episode, she compared John Sims' performance as the Master to that of Frank Gorshin's Riddler in the 1960s Batman show. I personally disagree. It's more like the Joker, the modern-day Joker. There are aspects of the Joker that are now in the Master that I like, but I'll get to that a little later. It's a bit unusual to see him act in this manner, to a degree. I get they're trying to reinvent him, I've got no problem with that. But sometimes it just doesn't work. It seems so unmaster-like, especially when you just had Derek Jacoby, and when you had some really great masters like Roger Delgado and Anthony Ainley. Also, wouldn't people be concerned to see only Saxon leave the cabinet room? 
Surely some people would be asking where the other ministers had gone. But people do get suspicious. A reporter from the Sunday Mirror, Vivian Rook, arrives to speak to the master's wife, Lucy. She reveals claims that Harold Saxon is a fake identity, that he faked his degree, his family, everything. Appearing after Harriet Jones resigned, he managed to launch the Archangel Network, and he worked his way to victory to become Prime Minister. But Vivian Rook is caught by the Master himself, and is murdered by four Trade Federation core ships with knives. The lady doesn't like us. Silly lady. No. Dead lady. Also, another little side note here. Lucy kind of reminds me of Harley Quinn, too. She knows that the Master is a power-hungry liar, but seems so blind because of her love for him. And I do actually like that to a degree. In Martha's home, the Doctor reveals that he managed to fuse the Tyler's coordinates at the end of the previous episode, and so the Master can only travel between 100 trillion AD and the 21st century. This is before we see the effects of Archangel, hypnotising Martha into the drum beat before Saxon makes a broadcast. After reminding viewers of the past alien invasions, including Big Ben and the Slitheen, the Sycorax, the Cybermen, and the Rachnos, he reveals he has made contact with an alien race, the metal spheres from earlier, named the Toclophane. He reveals they will arrive tomorrow morning, and leaves a bit of an unusual message. Tomorrow? We take our place in the universe. Every man, woman, and child. Every teacher, and chemist, and lorry driver, and farmer. Or, I don't know, every medical student. At these words, they discover a bomb behind the TV, which goes off just as they manage to escape. <whistles> anyway, she brings up her family, and they reveal that Saxon's men are conducting some espionage. However, the truth doesn't set them free this time. The trio manage to escape, and after Martha calls her brother, uh, Saxon reveals that he's listening in on the conversation. Wait, if he's listening, can't he track her? I mean, sure, it's 2007, but they still had tracking technology back then. This is when the doctor takes the phone and decides to have another conversation with the master. Now, I do really like this. Again, it's keeping that relationship between the Doctor and the Master from the classic show. And I still think they do it well from time to time in the new show as well. As the Master does some Joker-style taunting on the Doctor, he reveals the trio are now wanted men, and they flee into hiding. As news circulates about the Toclophane's impending arrival, the Master treats us to how every single sane person entertains themselves by watching the Teletubbies. Inside their little hiding spot, the Doctor explains the Master's backstory. It's quite interesting to see how a young Master looked into the young tempered schism and how it would change him forever. Some would be inspired, some would run away. And some would go mad. There are other origin stories as well, but I'm personally no expert in that field. Jack introduces us to the reformed Torchwood. You're part of it. The old regime was destroyed at Canary Wharf. I rebuilt it. I changed it. And when I did that, I did it for you in your honor. We discover the reality of Archangel its low-level Time Lord telepathy, and the Doctor puts together a clever new invention, three TARDIS keys that makes them unnoticed, so long as they bring no attention to themselves. It's actually quite a clever invention on the part of the Doctor. It would be useful for navigating certain bases stealthily, but would it affect Daleks and Cybermen as well as humans? And of course, there's the customary, the companion loves the Doctor, but he doesn't realise that moment. Good grief, I hate that trope. The President takes control of the operation, which will be held on the Valiant aircraft carrier rather than in the UK. 
after we see the Jones family taken to the ship, we do get to see a bit of a parallel with Batman and the Joker and the Doctor and the Master and their relationship. Now that sounds like Torchwood. Right. Still a good plan. He's a Time Lord, which makes him my responsibility. I'm not here to kill him. I'm here to save him. There's that connection. They're the yin to each other's yang, and I personally like this. It was a really good move on the writer's part. They arrive on the Valiant, revealed to be a magnificent Doctor Who version of the Marvel Calicaria, while everyone prepares for the arrival of the Toxfane. While the TARDIS is found, it's not looking so good. It's a paradox machine. Stop it. Not that I know what it's doing. Touch the wrong bit, blow up the solar system. Then we've got to get to the master. Yeah, how are we going to stop him? Keep that scene in mind for the next video. When the Toclophane arrive, they don't recognize the president before Saxon reveals the truth. He's the master, and he kills the president, capturing the doctor and revealing his own laser screwdriver. Laser screwdriver. Who'd have Sonic? And the good thing is he's... The master brings up a previous episode and uses the screwdriver and the technology from that episode to age him 100 years. Gosh, those prosthetics are horrible. It looks like if William Hartnell made it to 100, or just a really bad makeup job. At two minutes past, the paradox activates, and down come the six billion toclophane. On his orders, they kill one-tenth of the Earth's population to subjugate them, as Martha manages to escape. The world has fallen to the toclophane, the master reigns supreme, and Martha is left on her own. End episode. Back when I first saw this episode as a kid, I loved it. I thought it was a great episode. Looking back though, uh, elements of it, but others not so much. The political stuff makes no sense. They have no idea how British politics work. The Master, I still have some mixed views on. But I still like the writing stakes and some of the writing of the Doctor and the Master's relationship. It was pretty good. And I can still say that I enjoy it. So, like last time, 7 out of 10. How does this arc all end? Well, you'll have to join me next time when I review Last of the Time Lords. So, until next time guys, goodbye. Hide it out.